อ brain candy Hello I'm Matt and I'm 22 years old or at least so I'm told for example on the planet Saturn I'm not even a year old yet Last time I checked I'm potty trained What is age and how do we define it What's going on here and what is your age on Wolf 1061C Could you imagine waking up and calling that big yellow thing in the sky Wolf 1061 Oh, this morning I watched the most beautiful Wolf 1061 rise. Strange. Wolf 1061 is a red dwarf star in the constellation Ophiuchus. It was discovered by astronomers from the University of New South Wales that this star hosts three planets in its system that could be habitable by humans. The astronomers from down under have discovered that the planets are larger than the Earth, with the smallest and closest to the star being 1.4 times 4.3 times, and 5.2 times the mass of the Earth, respectively. Whoa, now that's a lot of real estate. I mean, come on, we're talking about 4.3 times as much space for everybody on Earth, right? Unfortunately, that's not really how it works, but we'll get to that later. But here's the downside to these planets. They're about 14 light years away. That means if you were traveling at the speed of light, a speed so fast it makes the trip from the sun to the earth in about eight minutes, a speed so fast where time appears to slow down and completely stop altogether, if you were going that fast, it would still take you 14 years. Okay, now that's a little far, but bear with me here because this is actually one of the closest habitable planets we've discovered so far. Whoa! Okay, so what makes these planets more special than any other hunks floating around a star? Distance. Not so much the planet's distance to us, but the planet's distance to its star. See, the reason you and I are here right now ultimately comes down to this. Earth flies around the sun going about 66,600 miles per hour. Oh, that's pretty fast. The radius of that orbit is about 93 million miles, or one astronomical unit. It is that distance that planetary mass objects with sufficient atmospheric pressure can support liquid water on their surfaces. Water, the matrix of life. The work of Hubert Strughold, Harlow Shapley, and Su Xu Huang coined the term Circumstellar Habitable Zone, or CHD for short. Now this is reliant on the planet's position in its solar system and the amount of radiant energy it gets from its star. Now CHC goes by another nickname, the Goldilocks Zone. Why? Because too close and any water burns off into gas. Too far and the water freezes. It is that distance that is just right to support intelligent life in a liquid water medium. Now back to our Wolf 1061 rise. <laughs> Astrologists say that the smallest of the newly found batch, Wolf 1061b, sits too close to the star, and Wolf 1061d is just outside of that habitable zone. But it is Wolf 1061c that sits just right in that Goldilocks zone. Now, we don't know for sure if the atmosphere is habitable, but if the planet crosses the face of the star, scientists will be able to get a better chance of analyzing it. But for this video, let's pretend it was. Let's pretend we did have the means to get there, and that there was a distributed ratio of oxygen and nitrogen. What would it be like? Well, let's start from the beginning. What if I parachuted in? Even with hundreds of jumps back here on Earth for experience, I would still land safely on the ground below to explore, right? Actually, there's a significant chance I wouldn't. See, as I said before, Wolf 1061c is 4.3 times the mass of the Earth. To understand this, you need to understand how gravity and mass are related. Sir Isaac Newton, better known as the Apple Guy, no, the other Apple Guy, was the first to mathematically describe the pulling force of gravity but couldn't puzzle out the source of gravity. Huh? But after Albert Einstein released his theory of relativity in 1905, we know gravity does not, in fact, pull. 
Gravity is not pushing nor pulling me to the ground I'm standing on right now, nor the chair you sit. I'm actually falling towards the center of the Earth, that is. Dan Burns uses a great model to portray the force of gravity in space in his video. When there is a larger mass, the bend in space-time is more severe, and other smaller mass objects get caught into that bend and fall into orbit. The more mass an object has, the greater force of pull it will appear to have on other objects around it. This is how Einstein described gravity as bending or warping space-time. This bend is actually the reason that satellites can stay in orbit. If they leave the Earth at a certain velocity, getting to the outer atmosphere where resistance is extremely low, a constant velocity can be maintained, and it is essentially continuously falling towards the Earth. Ergo, if I jumped from my shuttle, Wolf 1061C's larger mass would cause me to reach a higher terminal velocity than Earth's accelerating gravitational force of 9.8 meters per second squared, shortening my average freefall time from a set elevation, causing me to hit the ground more quickly than I expected. Splat. But what if I did manage to land on Wolf 1061C safely? Well, that same increased mass and increased gravity would make moving around, well, strenuous. And that's an understatement. See, the cells and vessels and protein structures in our body have all evolved under a constant force of gravity. It hasn't changed in the last several billion years. Instantaneously put a greater force on each and every single one of them, and the results aren't pretty. Well, for one, simple trips and falls could be fatal, especially for a taller person. Your heart would have to contract and pump intensely harder just to circulate blood throughout your limbs. And you might feel, feel faint or uneasy due to lack of circulation to your brain. You would also develop arthritis more easily in your joints. Even if humans did live generation to generation to pass on their traits, and birth was possible, the increased gravity would drive evolution to select for shorter limbs, thicker bones, thicker blood, bigger skeletal muscles, and most likely an enlarged heart. But all hope is not lost for our potential Earth, because being massive simply isn't the only factor that comes to play on gravity. The further you are away from the object's center, the less force felt. This relationship of force is demonstrated by F equals big G times M divided by R squared, where big G is Newton's constant, the M represents the planet's mass, and R represents your distance to the center. So we know that Wolf 1061C's mass is 4.3 times that of Earth. And for reasons we mentioned before, it would be ideal to have a gravity similar to that on Earth. To solve for the radius that Wolf 1061C would need to experience that same gravity on Earth, we can set up a ratio derived from Newton's equation like this where the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared is equal to the mass of the planet divided by the radius of the planet squared. Solving for the radius, you do some math here, math there, blah blah blah, the radius of 1061c would have to be about 13,211 kilometers. Remember, that's if we wanted to feel the same force of gravity here on Earth of 9.8 meters per second squared. But in their paper, DJ Wright and his department use methods from Weiss and Marcy's mass analysis of KOI 94D and calculate our little guy to have a radius of 1.64 times that of Earth. This size would put 1061C's radius at about 10,448 kilometers, yielding a gravity that makes someone who's 150 pounds feel like they're about 250. This ratio is excellently explained in a Harvard study, Radius and Structure Models of the First Super-Earth Planet. They go on to provide numerical methods and equations of state models to calculate super-Earth compositions on the example GJ876D. You see, the radius determines planetary density. Planetary density then determines elemental composition, which can then affect thermal core models, like our own ferric radiating cells. Now, those thermal core models can then affect tidal heating effects. See, that radius is an incredibly important value when you want to consider life on another planet. Now, there are numerous indexes that classify potential Earths. For example, the ESI, or Earth Similarity Index, factors in variables such as density, radius, escape velocity, and surface temperatures 
and compares them to Earth on a percent scale. Wolf 1061C, for example, is only 76% Earth-like. Now you may be thinking that's not that much alike, and in reality it's really not, but you don't need to be like Earth to support life. Earth is just the only way we know. According to NASA's Ames Research Center, a person has survived two times Earth's gravity for 24 hours without exhibiting ill effects. Okay, now that's not a really long time, but it is an optimistic beginning. Renee Heller in this year's Scientific American said that super-Earths of about two times Earth's mass may in fact be more conducive to life than our own planet. Weird, but the higher surface gravity would lead to a thicker atmosphere and increased surface erosion, hence a flatter topography. The end result could be something of an archipelago planet with shallow oceans dotted with island chains ideally suited for biodiversity. Okay, this may be cool and may seem like science fiction. Science, yes, but hardly fiction anymore. There are actually thousands of potential Earths out there. Did you know we launched a spacecraft specifically to search and explore for these planets with similar masses? Since Kepler's launch on March 7, 2009, there have been over 4,696 super-Earths discovered. And that's only within the constellations of Cygnus and Lyra in the Milky Way galaxy. Okay, so let's bring it back now. Let's say that you could handle the gravity on 1061C and that there was a stable atmosphere and rocky terrain. Let's bring it back to our original question. How old are you on Wolf 1061C? But before we answer this, we must first define what a year is. Well, you might say, okay, we all know that a year is the time it takes for the Earth to make one revolution around the Sun. Well, consider this. Wolf 1061C revolves around its star once every 18 days. That means on Wolf 1061C, for every 18 Earth days, it is one year. Okay, so if I stepped out onto that planet, how old would I be? Would I be Matt, the 22-year-old Earthling, or would I be 396? Now, you might be saying, I haven't spent 396 revolutions on that planet, I've spent 22 revolutions here on Earth. And you're right by that. So, what would I be if I spent a year on Wolf 1061C? Would I be 22 Earth revolutions and one 1061C revolution, or would I be 22 Earth years and 18 days? Technically, those are both valid, but that's about to seem really arbitrary. 